First, first team fish right there, baby. Thank you guys for tuning in again for United Fishing Charters brought to you by Starbright. This Extreme Clean is this week's featured product, guys. I'm gonna pair it up with uh, the Magic Sponge, which was last week's featured product. <clears throat> this is a degreaser, guys. So not only is it good for uh, blood stains and whatnot on the boat after a uh, day of fishing, if you miss some with that raw water wash down, you can keep this on the boat too. So you can fix those problems, uh, that blood before it gets baked on there and becomes a real problem, guys. Uh, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna uh, spray this on. I use this in everything from my bathtub to workout equipment to uh, uh, my sink. Uh, the whole nine yards, guys, the, the base of the toilet, uh, you know, where it gets all nasty. I use it down there, guys. I use it everywhere. And I also, like I said, I pair it up with the magic sponge, okay? So I spray this on. I let it set 15 to 30 seconds, and then I wipe it clean with the magic sponge, guys. This, this, this stuff is just awesome. Like I said, every room in my house. Guys, first of all, I want to update you on Ryan, uh, first mate. Um, you could imagine for most people being a being a mate is hard enough and then you want to come and be an offshore fisherman as a triple amputee uh, so we're doing things a little differently um, Ryan's learning how to work the boat so he's going he's learning how to troll which he's picked up on very quickly um, and then um, he's learning how to run drifts how to get the boat close to structure like a tower the Navy tower all those awesome top water amberjacks we got our first team fish is what we're calling it because we're a team now baby i love it um, it, it's great to be part of a team again guys it's been six years since i was in uh, ranger battalion and had that that teammate atmosphere and uh ryan's brought it back to me for sure so guys uh be looking out for him and um, i was shocked i was fighting this shark that ate one of our amberjack i looked to my right this wild man uh, was standing next to me on the boat, all strapped into the T-top. I mean, two prosthetic legs just straight getting it, guys. Also, follow him on Instagram, Handy Wild. Handy, because he's got one hand, and he wild. All right, guys? So check him out on Instagram. He turkey hunts, does self-defense. I mean, the dude does everything. It's amazing. So what we were throwing out there, guys, at these top water amberjacks was this uh, just a little pencil topper. I'd replace the hooks because we learned that these do not like amberjacks, guys. Um, what I'm noticing, guys, it's the size of the top waters when you change them. Try to match the hatch. Um, you know, the other day they wanted it really, really just, something just splashing hard. So these pencil poppers were, were doing the trick. Our smaller ones weren't doing it yesterday. The Cuda seemed to like those when the water heats up. Guys, we were using the uh, St. Croix Triumph inshore, that's right, baby. Inshore rod on amberjacks, you lose a lot, but it's fun. This is the 7.6 medium heavy. You can get that at Palmetto State Armory, and I have it paired up with the 5000 Saltus MQ by Daiwa, guys. Awesome, awesome, awesome equipment. You can get all of it at Palmetto State Armory. Um, guys, I would stick with this rod for what you're doing. Uh, if you wanted to save some money, you don't have to get, you know, three, four hundred dollar reel. You can just get you, you know, you, they got 60 to 100 dollar reels in there. That'll do you just fine, guys. All right. Um, let's let's move on to our uh, wind forecast here. So let's see, guys, starting Friday, Friday, Friday. OK, this is for 20 miles out. It's 18 knots out of the northeast, two and a half feet at five seconds not buying it it's going to be nasty i will not be out there moving on to saturday saturday guys is looking really 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 good you're, you're talking uh, uh, the top speed it looks like at 1 p.m is eight knots out or excuse me eight yeah eight knots out of the uh uh south and it is going to be two feet at five six Guys, look at it. Look at those swells spreading out and dropping around the change of the tide. So you can change your, uh, plan your travel times if you're making a longer run around those tides, guys. That's what we do. Um, so then, guys, moving on to Sunday, it looks like a, a very low north wind. You know, we, we're going to have two feet at six seconds, guys. Two feet at six seconds. If that's accurate, um, it, it's going to be a good day. Monday looks completely blown out again. Saturday and Sunday look very fishable, okay? Call Justin Gutting if you're going to the reefs. Get some fiddler crabs. 
you should be able to get those sheep's head. Those sea bass haven't moved in shallow yet. If you're moving out to the snapper banks and you're bottom fishing, you're looking at snappers, triggers, etc. Okay, guys? Um, amberjack are everywhere right now. Get out around the towers and throw those topwaters. I think you'll enjoy it. So for the rest of this local fishing report, I got a special guest for us that we're getting ready to flash to. Local legend, Miss Judy. I hope you all enjoy it. Hey guys, Captain Jimmy here with your third week of United Fishing Report. We got something very special this week. Uh, if you are in or around Savannah, Georgia, or if you have just fished in the Southeast, you have heard of Miss Judy's Charters. Uh, it was started by her dad, uh, pretty much the original charter in Savannah. So any guides in Savannah owe a lot to this lady and her dad, and she's going to bring us our fishing report from Savannah this week. Miss Judy, what's been going on on the hey, short, Captain? I like that intro. I appreciate you like that. that. Well, yes, ma'am. We're all here because of you and your daddy. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, well, I'll, I'll start with the inshore because uh, I know a lot of people are trying to get out there in their boats. They've been you know, they've been in the house, it's been cold, it's time to go fishing. Um, a few reports uh, on we're catching a lot of um, spotted sea trout, flounder, redfish, but there is a few secrets to some of this stuff. Um, you know, you can buy your bait, and I suggest always buying it when you get it, because, you know, shrimp are hard to catch. Yes, they but are. But if you do get an opportunity to catch some shrimp, you're going to notice that they're going to bite the shrimp you catch faster than the other ones. That you buy and it's a known fact that not because the shrimp people do anything to them you definitely want to buy them it's just that these shrimp haven't been they haven't been shocked or anything and they act differently so if you ever get a chance to catch your own try using those first because it really gets the bite going yep okay and also if they die you can also also use them fresh dead so. yeah, fresh dead and, and then again, freeze them freeze right, them back for whiting and put them in the water bottles that way you don't get in trouble with your wife or your husband. If you put them in the water bottles, wash the water bottles, put them in the freezer, you won't smell it. You're going to get in a lot of trouble if you smell it, you know, and even in I your car. I didn't know that. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> so, uh, but the fishing has been pretty good now. Um, the, you know, if you go fish where you fished before or you think people have caught fish before and you don't catch them right away, give it a 15-minute wait move up or down the creek there or up or down the river usually these fish stay within the area that they started with in the first place i got a question for you this time of year if you want to target the speckled sea trout would you be more in the creeks or out more toward the sound well now they're doing their little bit both because you got you got the shrimp in the deep holes okay so they're going in here doing that feeding on that and then they're also catching them in the river so you can figure if you find a bank that's got oysters and structure on it, and you're going to use a, a traditional float, my old school thing is old school, yep. can't help it. So you can let the tide do the work for you because a lot of people don't know how to cast and who no. cares? Nobody knows unless you tell them, <laughs> but you can anchor up above a place, cast out, or just let the tide take your float down at different distances from the bank. And where you get a hit is where the fish are. So, and you can keep doing that. And you can, a big cork, you can let it drift forever. And then you can start over and always drift. Remember, if you fish towards the bank and you're not getting any bites, that's where the fish are. Off the bank. That's right. And especially with these deep holes and stuff. And I, I, I know that the trout, a lot of times, I've been fishing flats before out there in Walsall, and you're up in two and a half feet of water or so messing around, no redfish bite. You just turn around, blind cast off where that shelf is, where it right. goes from two exactly. to 10, 12, 15 feet. And a lot of times those trout will be sitting there. That's correct. And and these these fish, you know, they, that's why they got fins. They move. Yes. I, I say fight. that all the time. They <laughs> swim. And you know what my dad used to say? He said, Judy, people on the bank cast to the middle of the river. People in the boat cast to the bank. <laughs> That's what he used to say, me. and there's a lot of truth to that. There really is. I never really thought of it, but it's really true. Whenever you're fishing from the, when you're surf fishing, you're casting out as far as you can. And if you're in the boat, you're casting, you're casting back toward the bank. I know it's crazy. Uh, so, so we got the inshore. So live shrimp is the way to go right now. Catch it if you can. But never turn down buying it because it's hard enough to get as it it's is. A it's a it's guarantee. It's a guarantee, and you're going to catch fish with a guarantee. Yes. And, and my daddy used to always do this. And this this is old this is old school. My daddy used to say, Shrimp don't swim. They they hum they what do they do in place? 
I'm trying to think of the word. When you're 70, you get a little confused. It happens. They, they, uh, they're in neutral. They just hum in place is what. So he throws things like he can take a rock and wrap croaker sack around it, a little piece of croaker sack, and put it in the bottom of his well, and they'll hold on to it. Really? And then they don't use all their energy up swishing around and popping and beating themselves up right okay and, okay uh, I didn't and, know and that. do you know when they raise shrimp they put these you know those chairs that have the strips in them the lawn chairs yes ma'am the red the blue or green and white lawn chairs they run those across so that the shrimp will have something to hold on to so that they don't use all their energy and burn up all their weight i know it's crazy but it's, i did not it's know a few that. minutes that he used to say we're taking the shrimp for a ride today Okay, I so said we got a better way to keep the shrimp alive. Buy your shrimp after you buy it. If you see some pop and throw that cast net, guys. definitely throw that cast net. Um, okay, so moving out to the reefs, what, what, what okay. would you still be doing on the reefs right well, now? Well, artificial reefs right now that we looked at the records from last year and we should have Spanish mackerel. Now, you might not see them, but we should have them, and they're pretty good sized ones, and they should be over the structure. Like I said, you won't see them. I suggest either pitching to the structure and letting your spoons fall or either pulling planers across the structure. Like I said, you won't see them. You're not going to see birds diving and all that kind of stuff. Because for some reason, they're not pushing the bait up. They're feeding around where they get the quickest meal. Okay. And that's normal for this time of year. So if you get in, that's reefs and 40, 50, 50, 40, 50 foot of water. Then if you want to go to like the El Bui and stuff in mm -hmm. deeper water, the black sea bass will be there, but it's going to be like catch 10, keep one. Yep. So <laughs> yes, maybe. And, but it's a lot of fun to catch. And I suggest counting them because you're going to go home and go, I caught 100 fish today. Yeah. And that's kept, a literal number. A literal I kept, number. I kept two. <laughs> <laughs> but two fish is good. You can feed two people. You can feed two people, especially if you cook them whole. And those sea bass are delicious. And then as the water warms, then we'll have those, the, our knot heads come in. Right. To that 60, 70 feet of water. Right. And there, and you could probably catch some knot heads really good right now in that depth water. Um, but we've been inundated by red snapper, which is another problem. But if you do start catching red snapper, you know you can't keep them because that season's closed. But move. Or go to the next spot and come back later because once they start feeding, you're not going to get anything but red snapper because they're coniferous, boy. I tell well, you. oh, they are, and they they've gotten so aggressive because they've overwhelmed so much that they're actually. I, I've been in a hundred to a hundred ten feet of water, guys. Had a flat line out, a pogey, flat line, catch and had a red snapper come up off the bottom, and that's 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 scary when you got a bottom well, fish you know, coming that, up like that. Well, that fish, if you look at these fish, like you see the grouper. His eyes are more on the top of his head because mm -hmm. he looks up to feed. Now, a snapper, he has a lot more feeding area. His eyes are on the side, so he feeds around and up and down. So that's why you get him, and he can adjust much better going up. They are, they are definitely, uh, definitely, definitely pains in the rear end some days. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and, like, and like Captain Miss Judy said, guys, move away from them i i have not gotten i have not been on a piece of structure on the reefs um and they're even moving in shallower um i've caught them on the savannah reef. right yep um so it's, it's peanuts little they yep. go <laughs> so guys move away from them um another thing is correct me if i'm wrong captain but the the, the red snapper will actually chase off the other fish and exactly, kill the other fish well what they do is they're so aggressive and they travel in schools and they talk to each other and they say kill them all so, so they do all. kill everything. They well, don't they, just push them out. Well, it's our opinion. And again, this is my opinion. I'm not a scientist or a marine biologist. But if you could look at what's inside that fish, because you can't kill them. But if you could examine the gut, you would see what I'm talking about. They have a lot of stuff. They eat a lot of stuff. And black sea bass have a tendency to lay in the current on the bottom and only feed up in the water column when they have, they have to chase their, what they're eating. The red snapper has the ability to feed up and down, vertically and horizontally. I, I didn't. I never even thought about that with the eyes. That makes a lot of sense. That makes. That makes. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So we've got that going on on the reefs, snapper banks. Uh, that's. I mean, you're well, you're an absolute legend out there. <laughs> well, um, the the snapper banks right now. We try to detour our customers. We say after May first then you get your best chance for catching and keeping grouper. But before May 1st, we suggest taking an eight hour trip and just go and let me take you bottom fishing because you'll catch uh, black sea bass, triggerfish, white grunts, but no vermilion, 
but I hate to make hate to suggest people taking a 10 hour trip before May 1st, because once you get out there, if you catch a group, you're going to have to let it go. Yeah, and that's a sad thing. And it is. It's very sad. <laughs> that's a sad I don't, thing. I don't, like, I don't eat fish, but I don't like to let my group go. No, no. And it's, uh, you, you, you are, you are actually, uh, successful at targeting grouper around here. That, that's something I can't do guys. When, when, whenever you guys call me and you say you want to target grouper, that's why I tell you to call Captain Miss Judy oh, you because do what I've seen you with your grouper. Uh, I, I've caught a couple. I just, it's just, you got, you just got it down to a well, science. These, well, it's hard now because of the red snapper. We have a lot of red snapper on the reef. So you have to find a reef that's not indated heavily with red snapper. And is that and that's just the time on the water moving around and finding right. Where well, you not. know, and it is true because all my my log books will even say big red snapper here, no red snapper here. So that's where the grouper have a tendency to migrate to where they're not having to fight so much. Makes sense to me. And then blue water, we're not even worried about blue well, water yet. No, are we? we're not really blue water. Blue water, no, because of the weather's so crazy. But if you did get to go, you could wahoo. The, okay, so wahoo, the jump wahoo, and blackfin. Okay. Now, black fins morning and evening type of yeah, thing, typically. But, but when, when I first started fishing in the Gulf Stream, mm -hmm. I went a hundred times a year. Wow. When, that's when I was young. I, know. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. But, you know, I, I was raised a different way. A lot of people say, just like you do, morning and afternoon. And they are definitely early morning, late afternoon feeders. Uh -huh. But I couldn't. I had too much to do before I left here, so I couldn't leave. So I had to go and make my best find where I could. So my deal was I'd get out there and troll, or I'd get out there and bottom fish first. I'd bottom fish. We caught so many bottom fish until you get tired of bottom fishing, and then I would troll. And we caught a lot of black fin, and that's when yellow fin were running, not in the morning or in the afternoon, because these fish, they feed early in the morning, feed out there, but they're still there. So okay. there's a possibility to catch them. Now, are you just, so if you, if, if, let's say we had some good weather and I was going to go out to the stream, just drag some valley hoop? Yes, okay. I do. Uh, I do high speed trollers. I have these uh, valley hoods, okay. trolling lures that I pull at 18 knots. Oh, wow. And um, it's really pretty cool. It's, I'm doing, in fact, the book that I'm doing on offshore, it explain it completely. And it's really a good uh, it, it, I love to write about it because I know how excited it is. Boy, when you have a fish hitting you at 18 knots, something is going to go crazy. My guys always say, it's going to pull the back end of the boat. You know, it's oh, that, that, yeah. it yeah. sounds like a bomb going yeah, off. Yeah, it sure. does. So right now, um, it, it's always good to go because it's the early in the season and you just want to go so bad anyway. Yeah. So if you get a chance and you can, Go. It'll okay, make the ride if you, we got the and weather. And kings are here too. Kings are here. I, that's you know I get fired up about those kingfish. The kingfish Whew. are at the stream, so you could catch one, a big one. Okay, well, hey, that that's enough to make me go out there if we get the weather for it. Now you mentioned your book. Yes. Tell me, tell me about your books because okay. there's not just, there's not just one book, folks. There's multiple. Okay, so here's what I did. This is the yellow book. We call it the yellow book because it's easy to describe. This is my old school rules of inshore okay. fishing. So if you would like one of these books, it's colored. It's got a bunch of pictures of how we how we do how we did things in the old days. I don't have any new stuff in here, but I have pictures of lures that we use that you can still purchase, still order. Rigs, you know, how to fish, how to use it, how to rig up a shrimp, how to rig up a popping cork, little little stibbits about how to do this, that, and the other. Okay. Some great the brown. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're okay. So guys, while she's looking at that, this this is what you're dealing with here, okay? Th this is this is this is Miss Judy's quote unquote secrets, okay? I say quote unquote because we all got secrets, but guys, like she said, this is old school. Keep in mind, guys, we, fishing has evolved a lot. It is very important to remember the basics, the old school basics, to remember where everything started, and these tactics will still work without a doubt. Boy, are they old. <laughs> <laughs> they are so old. My daddy used to do some stuff. We have this we have this one lure, and I'll tell you about it. It's the stupidest lure ever. It's an um, a old standard cork, uh -huh. an eight-inch cork. And so my daddy, sometimes drinking was involved, but I can't say for sure. <laughs> but um, he would, like, he would forget to pull it in or something. He'd move the boat and let it drag. Well, uh -huh. a fish would hit it. So one time offshore, he decided to take the cork, put a wire through it and a treble hook, 
and pull it behind the boat. If you've never seen a cork behind the boat, it doesn't pop on top of the surface. The hole in the middle makes it dive. Makes sense. And it dives and it, and it shoots. Well, we catch fish on that. Really? So I used to tell the guys when they go to blue water, take more than one cork. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to, I got to try that now. I've got to try that. I'm going to make you some up so you'll know what I'm doing. Okay. About. All right. I use, I have a bunch of corks that they bit. Uh huh. They, and somebody said, well, you should put a, you know, put a hook in the middle. Well, it won't work right with the hook in the middle. You just got to put a hook at the end. It's most entertaining. Okay. Yeah. I definitely want to try that. Now you've got, you've got another book yeah, here. Yeah, this book here. This is, and, this and is I'm excited story. to read this one a lot. This is I'm, the story book, but this book uh, is a story book about me and my father. Um, my father was a character. Um, and this book was published in 1992. Now the new book will be things that have happened since 92 and things I found out about my father, which is pretty interesting. In this book, I say daddy allegedly worked for Al Capone. In the new book, it is confirmed that he worked for Al Capone and he's in the American Prohibition Museum. I, was, I saw I saw him in the museum. Now, now if we want these, because like if, guys, once again, let me reiterate. If you are a Savannah fisherman, you need you need to purchase these books, um, especially this one because this is where it all came from. So, if, if where where can we get these? Okay, so you can just go online to my website, and then you can email me and say I want the book. And what we've been doing since I haven't set up any way to order stuff, you just email me, say I want the book, I'll mail it to you. You can mail me a check. Nice and simple, guys. Just, just how and we like. If somebody said you're going to mail me the book before I mail you a check, absolutely, because I know fishermen don't lie. Very much. No, not yeah, right. <laughs> it, well, and at the end of the day, her dad worked for Al Capone. So I don't. I don't think you want to ever. That's what you had to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Captain Miss Judy, I really, really appreciate this. It was an hey, it's my pleasure. pleasure. You're my hero, man. Well, no, you know, yeah, that's funny <laughs> because you're you're mine. I mean, like I said, we wouldn't be here without you. I appreciate uh, this fishing report. And uh, I think we're going to start doing this once a week, either with you or one of your guys. Sure, and I think I'd be, we'd love to do it, and we appreciate you including us. Oh, yeah. Well, guys, and this is what it's all about, guys. If you call her, um, you know, and she's booked up on her offshore, you guys are looking for something a little different, then, then she kicks you to me. And you guys know any inshore thing I have. Um, I don't have an inshore boat on the water right now, so I push them to her guys who are all top of the line. You got Jake Ross, you got Garrett Ross, and um, obviously Matt Williams, Justin Ron. On, all just top-notch dudes on the inshore, um, and, and, and this is why this is why I like uh, uh, working alongside Miss Judy. I mean, it's an absolute honor. So, uh, as always, guys, we'll see y'all out on the water. Looking forward to it. Awesome, Miss Judy, that was freaking perfect. Hey, everybody, hey. Captain Mike with Spartan Charters of Georgia here on Lake Lanier. Right now, current lake conditions: our water temps are in the upper 50s, getting ready to breach that 60 degree mark. Color in the main body of the lake is the standard kind of green stained, and the elevation is just about a half a foot over full pool. Uh, we've got warm weather coming up this week, highs in the upper 70s and the low 80s. That's going to get us closer to, if not push us over that 60 degree threshold for the spring patterns to really open up. And we're going to be off the water this week, but if we were going to be heading out looking for those striper, what we would be doing is staying flexible. Uh, we'd have free lines in the mix. We'd have down lines for later in the day, weighted free lines, uh, standard free line with just a little split shot. Uh, and then we'd also have some casting rigs set up uh, with uh, the Sebile Magic Swimmer and even the old classics like the Hopkins Spoon. Uh, when we're pulling boards along the banks, we'll have somebody up front casting those lures up into the shallows, and you can oftentimes pick up an extra one or two fish doing that. Uh, for bass, uh, they're coming up into their spawn, just like we talked about last week. So shaky heads and Ned rigs are going to be your predominant two producers uh, if you're into the lure fishing. If you're looking for that really fun, furious action like we had a couple of weeks ago, I'd go back to pitching those free line herring, either below a slip float or just with a little bit of weight attached onto the line. And just hang on, because they're there, they're going to be feeding, they're voraciously feeding ahead of the spawn, and it's just really quick action. For crappy in the main lake, what I would be doing is I'd be looking at your lighter lures, given that there's less stain in the water, your chartreuses, your whites, your yellows, 
Um, putting a little bit of orange in there in, in that play as well. Uh, I like a, a standard like emerald green. Uh, there's a there's one jig that I really like that has that. Uh, up north of the lake, we had three inches of uh, rain in my backyard last week. So up north, you're probably going to see a little bit more stain. It'd be a little warmer too, but you'll see a little bit more stain in that water. So you're going to want to go with your darker color jigs to uh, complement that. If you're going to be uh, using live baits, I would recommend slip floats uh, because we have been hearing from some friends where, you know, they're, they're down 15, 20 feet deep and that's, that's tough to hit. Um, and with a slip float, that gives you that flexibility and that added uh, functionality to get that bait down deep. Like I said, we're off the water this week. We're going to look into get back at it next week. Until then, good luck, stay safe, and we'll see you on the water. Hey guys, hope you've enjoyed everything we've had for you so far. Um, I've got a couple of reports that I had sent in. Okay, guys, we have, uh, we have Grant Woodland. Woody's real time fishing on YouTube. Go check him out. Get him a subscribe. Uh, give him a subscribe. This dude is a land based fisherman and is good at it. So he says he's recently been catching whiting on pieces of chicken breast. That's right, chicken breast and fresh dead shrimp. I was out the other day, guys, and we caught a mess of whiting on some um, dead shrimp and it, it did awesome. Um, and then um, also, uh, we, we've got some um, pompano that have been showing up uh, and he, he's been doing well with those guys. Now moving on to the Outer Banks, um, they've been blown out up there. They couldn't, my buddy Clayton, buddy Clayton Jones out there of Good Time Sport Fishing. Good Time Sport Fishing, give them a call guys, you will not regret it. They caught three blue fins um, and then one of those was a keeper. The Wahoo, the Wahoo and the black fin have show, uh, shown back up. So th this, is, this is a good time of year. Um, whether you're in the Outer Banks, here it doesn't matter, guys. It's a good time of year, a lot of migrations happening. So be looking for that here soon with us. We're, um, we're, we're, I saw one cobia this week, uh, well, one keeper. I saw two, one undersized, one keeper. So we should have all those migrations start soon and those, that mahi run is right around the corner, guys. Thank y'all, I hope y'all enjoyed it. Stay sane, stay safe. We'll see y'all out on the water, baby.